Hi everybody, this is Pamela Coey. I wanted to wish you a very happy new year and I hope you all had a good holiday. Um, so I wanted to touch base with you and tell you a little bit about you know, what's going on in my studio and I'm also curious about what your new year's goals are. I know that as artists we all set them and sometimes they seem to be um, goals that are achievable and sometimes they might be um, a little overly ambitious but um, as I share my goals with you I hope that in the comment box you will share your goals with me so that I can kind of get a feel for what you're thinking about and maybe we're aiming for some similar things so um, first off um, I'm going to give you a studio tour I'm going to walk you around kind of review um, the past year and where I'm at and then kind of going forward what I hope to accomplish, you know, some of the many things. I've got a long laundry list, but of course I, um, I tend to do that. It's like just have a lot of things I'd like to do. Some of these things are new, things I've never done before, and that's always good too because then I know that even if I don't quite meet my goals, at least I try. So some of my goals include creating um, more videos, more content, um, moving into yet another one of my favorite mediums, which is encaustic. And I realize that most of you who know me um, on YouTube uh, have seen me paint in acrylic and you've seen me paint mixed media and of course cold wax and oil and I love all those mediums but I don't think I've ever shown any videos of uh, working in caustic and I'm really curious like how many of you because a lot of you out there may actually work in encaustic as well and that that's something I just don't know so Anyways, one of my goals this year is to create an online course in encaustic. It's something that I've been doing since I think it was 2000 and maybe six or eight when I first learned how to do it. So way before I learned how to do cold wax and oil, I actually was doing more encaustic and I really fell in love with it for a lot of different reasons. Um, so in front of me, I've got some crock pots and electric frying pans because I recently did a video on how to make my own encaustic medium and that will be part of this upcoming online encaustic course. And then behind me, I just thought I would show some of the, um, the paintings that I've done. These are not terribly recent. This is a very early painting that is called Subatomic, and it's kind of one of my favorites because it was one of those things where I was able to think of a topic or a theme that I really love, which are dots, and I also love stripes. And I'll go into way more detail about uh, themes and content of um, a new body of work that I've been working on over the last year. And I'll be sharing that in my Watch and Grow library. So if you're interested in, you know, a lot of different content that focuses on so many different realms of all the things I do in my studio, and that's kind of a lot of different things, um, not just painting, but, you know, critiquing other people's work and other types of tutorials, but in general, all those videos in the library are much longer in content than anything I could ever put on YouTube. Um, YouTube is great for those who, you know, they're in a hurry and, and they're busy and they lead busy lives, and so I don't tend to put the, the longest videos um, here. But in any case, I wanted to share what I'm doing. So again, um, these are the encaustics um, from a, a ways back. And um, so other goals, in addition to creating a brand new encaustic course, um, I'm actually going to be doing some live Zoom workshops and I decided that I would start out by doing one myself and um, it's full but it's going to be in um, cold wax and oil for beginners and it is a three-day um, Zoom workshop and it is full but for those of you out there who might be watching who are in it um, I will be emailing you soon with details and tell you what the schedule is like and I'm very excited because you know we can't we still can't do live workshops and I've had to um, reschedule and, and then some uh, have been postponed or canceled completely. So I want to point out that if you're interested in live Zoom workshops or there is one scheduled for Vienna in uh, 2021 that you know it may happen, it may not, we just don't quite know. It kind of depends on the pandemic and, and the route that that takes. But at myartandsuccess.com you can click at the top on workshops and then always know my schedule and know if a workshop is open and who to contact if you're interested. So um, lives and workshops, I've got one coming up on January 15th. I'm preparing for it. I'm excited. Um, had to get some new equipment to be able to do it. But um, all in all, it's a great way to keep the flow going, um, to 
be able to reach out to other artists who are interested in this fabulous medium. Another one of my goals is to really um, dive into color in a much more um, in-depth way. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. And what I'm going to be doing is going through like all of my paints and doing these kind of massive color charts of color mixing and seeing how far I can go with like one color and then you mix one color with another color and then all the color variations. And it's going to be actually part of a project that I thought of. And the project includes, you know, compiling all of these um, basically sheets of Arches oil paper and compiling them in kind of a book form. So that's another project um, that I'd like to work on. And I've got an upcoming show. So I've had one show that was postponed um, that was supposed to happen in June of 2020 at the Pritchard Gallery, um, which is aligned with the University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho. And I, um, I have a, a scale model that I can show you that um, has all the work. It was the way it was supposed to be, but then that was postponed. And then um, I have an upcoming show at the Radius Gallery, which I wanted to just let you know. It's called um, The Sense Beyond Desire, and it's opening on January 22nd. And if you're interested in a preview of all the work I'm going to be showing there, there is a link um, right below the video, and you can click on it and see all the work that I've worked on over the last year. For the most part, it's almost all encaustic. There are a few acrylic pieces in there, but in a longer video that will be for my Watch and Grow library members, I'm going to have a very exhaustive explanation of how I curated that body of work and how I worked on it um, over the last year, because with the Pritchard Gallery show not happening and being postponed, I could have just taken all that work and had it show at Radius Gallery, but I decided instead to create a whole new body of work in less than a year, so it was kind of an ambitious goal of mine, but um, in the end, I'm really, really glad I did that, and I will explain why. So, um, yeah, those are just like some of my main goals to pursue color and then to create this encaustic course and to then also scale up and work really large, um, as you've seen me do on uh, canvas, but do it the right way. So, um, if I have an oil prime canvas, I'd be working oils, and if it's a gesso uh, canvas, I could go either way with acrylic or oil and cold wax medium. But I've already done, like, uh, shown, you know, a portion of one painting that I recently finished. It's not rolled up in the corner there. Uh, an advantage of work on canvas is you can roll it up if it's not stretched already. So um, I will just expect that I will be showing you more of the large scale work. So um, I'd like to give you a tour of my studio right now. So um, here we go. And then at the very end of this video for YouTube, I also, um, uh, it's not a new thing necessarily, I've um, given our two schnauzers haircuts. And uh, I, back in what, 2016, I think I bought a grooming video for how to, how do you cut a schnauzer? And it's actually pretty complicated, but I, I don't know, I, I did it and I, I wasn't too disappointed. So recently I gave our female schnauzer and our male schnauzer uh, Cornelia and Vincent, both haircuts, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you like a time-lapse video of me giving Cornelia her New Year's haircut, because she really needed it. She looked like a little sheepdog, so that's coming up. So let's take that studio tour right now. Okay, so this is a view of my main studio wall. Um, when I do YouTube videos, uh, it's usually with this wall here, and you can see that's my door over that away, and here are those um, electric frying pans and crock pots that I mentioned. I recently had to make more encaustic medium and that is the equipment you use to make it. And I did create a video. Again, that video will appear in a brand new encaustic course, um, hopefully coming in 2021. But I wanted to also just get kind of a close up view. Um, one of the things you'll notice about encaustic work, if you're not familiar with it, and I know a lot of you are, but there's a certain luster to it. You'll notice that um, as I move the camera, um, there's a shine to it that, that that's one thing that makes it kind of hard to photograph encaustic work. Um, however, um, you know, you can see it here. And when you polish it, you know, that luster is just one of those things that really cannot be beat. Um, you can try to uh, replicate that in, in some other mediums like in, uh, with acrylic and, you know, how the four step process that I use to get a very similar finish to this. It almost looks like encaustic, but 
Um, in cold wax and oil, I, I haven't quite been able to get this type of satiny sheen. It's just so lustrous. Notice, um, though, that this is an older painting. It's, I don't know, a couple years old. But anyways, I just want to point out that um, for me, with my uh, big interest in design and color, that I care very much about, you know, the design elements and the composition. And so even though I work in various mediums, I just want to emphasize that I don't feel like it's ever really about, oh, what medium are you working in? It's more about, you know, my, my um, personal voice, my point of view, and am I getting it across regardless of what medium I use? And so that's one of the reasons why when I teach, I, I like to teach in different mediums, not just oil and cold wax medium to kind of emphasize that point that it's not really ever about the medium. I think the techniques you need to express your personal voice will come to you. You can either learn them or invent them yourself, but first you have to know who you are. So that's kind of what I focus on. This painting is an older one. It's called Some Atomic, and uh, I think part of it, you know, was inspired by my biochemistry background. It did remind me of Adams, but um, it, it's one of the earlier encaustics I did, but I kept it. Like I didn't really want to sell it for many, many years. Um, you can see uh, some of the details here. Um, you can see the sheen and uh, it's a grid. It has dots. So, you know, one of the things that I really love and I have always loved and felt this affinity to are grids and dots. And I know a lot of people in this world are also moved by that. Now, I don't really know why. Um, I do know that part of my heritage um, comes from, you know, Japan. And here's another um, close up. This painting is called Rolling Hills. You can kind of see some of the different techniques that I used. Um, but again, um, the interest in shape and design and, you know, eye movement around the piece. Those were all very important to me. And, you know, there's some techniques that I, I, um, I really needed to practice a lot before I could do this kind of work. Um, but this is a book that um, has really been a great, you know, source of maybe just me understanding where some of my interest in stripes and dots has come from. So I just wanted to open the very few, first few pages of this book, which features um, images of kimono pattern design. So um, I lost this book originally in the fire and this is one of the few ones that I decided to replace because <laughs> there are a lot of great designs in here but the ones that really caught my attention you know were the dots and then also um, these stripes. These are you know fabric samples, um, pictures of fabric samples and it kind of just, you know, I, I don't know, I, I think sometimes when we're inspired by something, we have to look at our heritage and wonder whether some of what we're inspired by comes from, you know, our DNA. I like to think of it um, as, yes, I think it does. Um, here's an unfinished painting. I will be working on this soon. This began with um, uh, uh, YouTube Live, and I want to get back to it. It's been a while. It's certainly very dry now. It's an oil and cold wax medium painting on Arches Oil paper and in a very preliminary early play stage. And I can't wait to get back into it and document the whole thing. That will go into my library. Of course, excerpts will probably appear on the YouTube channel. Um, but uh, when I do a um, video for the library, they're commonly like hours and hours long, and then they get broken into parts because I realize that not everybody wants to sit there and watch me paint um, and talk to myself for hours and hours. And then um, on this wall here, this is actually a cabinet with supplies in it, but um, some a recently finished oil and cold wax on the left. And then on the right is another encaustic. It's a little bit more quiet of a painting. Um, in this one, I incorporated some collage work. And then along this wall, I'll just give you the, the more global view here. And I apologize, my studio is really a mess right now because I am getting ready for this show at Radius Gallery. And part of... Um, what happens is, you know, early on, about almost a year ago, I mean, I had all this work ready for the Pritchard Gallery, and I had to decide, you know, do I just put that same work into Gradius, or do I work on new work? So all of this work was, you know, up for consideration. I've got a lot of oil and cold wax medium. 
love the medium. But the show is postponed until 2021. And since I started to be represented by Radius Gallery back in 2014, I hadn't even started to work in cold wax and oil at that time. I didn't know anything about it. And so I actually joined that gallery and pretty much just showed my encaustic work. And that's who my clientele, uh, their clientele that's interested in my work is, um, knows me mostly as an encaustic artist. So I thought, okay, um, time to heat up my hot plates, which are here. And I use propane torches. It's a very different medium, but um, again, it's not about the medium. Color is color. Um, how you apply it may differ and the surfaces we use may differ, but in the end, design is design, color is color, and we still have the very same design and color principles to think about. So um, this is my working area when I work in encaustic. It's in a different portion of the studio, way in the corner. Again, I will be doing a much longer video about giving more information about like, I guess, you know, some of the techniques I've been using and, you know, what does encaustic entail? There's actually quite a bit. Um, it's not an easy medium necessarily to get all the supplies for. Um, they're not hard to get, but you do have to get, you know, a few different things. Um, over on that back wall are some smaller six by six inch pieces. Um, most of them are not gonna be in the show because they are older. Some of them were experiments. Um, and then on this wall here, um, one nifty little tip for anyone working um, in a grid uh, with, you know, these are six by six inches, each of them. But I just wanted to point out that what they're hanging on is a cradle panel that I believe it's 48 by 48. It was actually painted to match the radius gallery wall a couple of years ago when I had a show there. And there are nails behind each one of these pieces. So I can go close up and just show you that if you're looking for a, a cool way to hang, um, see there are two screws and then that way you can hang your piece and you don't have to worry about it, you know, being crooked like this or like that. It just hangs straight, okay? And the other cool thing is that, think about, you know, coming into a gallery and a person is considering like, maybe they wanna buy four dot pieces or whatever, you know. Uh, above that, I've got a series of nine that could be purchased together, right? And then here above that is another series of six pieces that are also kind of based on a grid. But people like to be able to take them off the wall and move them around. Um, not all galleries will allow maybe a client to um, touch the work, but in this case, it's kind of an easy way to do it. You can rearrange things and a client will say, oh, you know, they wanna move things around and say, I like these four, or I like these two together. They might need to take one off and rearrange it. So I wanted to point out that that's a really cool way to display work in a series that's kind of small, or of course you can use a different panel. I use 48 by 48, but you know, you could have a bigger one. You could have a smaller one. And then, you know, I do like to mix scale. So I like to talk about how I have pieces as small as six by six inches. But then, um, you know, as I explain, I'm kind of moving into exploring color. And when it comes to encaustic and, and any other medium, you know, there's just so many things like transparency, you know, opacity. So this one I'm calling Abacus and it's um, 48 by 48 inches. And it was a lot of fun to work on, but these pieces get really heavy because they're all, you know, wax. And then over here, this one's called Into the Deep. This one's 30 by 30. Um, this is another exploration of a transparent color, phthalo blue. And then this is like almost all the reds I had. I mean, alizarin crimson, cadmium red that was really diluted to become transparent, rose matter, quinacridone magenta. I used mostly uh, reds, but then I also had some uh, uh, mostly warm tones, but then I also had some very cool, can't really see it, but some cooler um, colors in here, like the quinacridone magenta. So you can kind of see that. And then technically there are a lot of um, things that I did on this piece. I like intarsia, which I'm gonna go into a lot more detail when I talk in depth more about these pieces. And then over here, um, this is um, one of the larger pieces that I've ever done, four feet by six feet, and things get really challenging when you scale up to the size. You can kind of just see the comparison of scale between the blue piece and the larger one. Um, I'm calling the larger one Shoji because um, I like to, again, it's going back to my Japanese 
heritage and shoji um, that represents like a screen that you use to, um, that you have in, in a Japanese home. But here are um, some of the details. I have shown some of these images on my Instagram account, but um, there are some dots and then there are some lines, of course. And I really did a lot of intarsia where you gouge out the wax and then you fill it in with hot wax and then you scrape it really flat. So here are some close-ups of what's going on. It was a really challenging piece. It kind of sat in my studio unfinished for a long time. Um, and then finally I thought with Radius Show coming, I'm going to try and finish it. And then over in this section here is, um, I've got some new monotypes that are just hanging there. Um, really for inspiration, I feel like encaustic monotype, which is hot wax on paper, that um, you know, they're expressive and they're kind of like just about mark making for me or like drawing. And I just, again, here's that hanging system that I was talking about in another video that I got from Ikea. And it works really well. These are very thin sheets of rice paper. And this type of, you know, paper with wax on it can actually be um, collaged into a cold wax and oil painting. So that's another fascinating thing. The rice paper kind of disappears, it becomes invisible, and you've got the cold wax holding your collage piece in there. And given that it's wax, the wax is made of pigment and beeswax, it's very compatible with that medium, cold wax and oil. And then here's my little scale model for the Pritchard Gallery. This just shows like what I had done. Um, I was ready for the show that was supposed to happen in June of 2020. And I often make a scale model. This is my, this is the actual like two scale model of the floor plan. I was given, I don't know, over 2,500 square feet and it's a solo show. And so then I have all the images of my work um, that are printed out to the correct size. And then I'm able to kind of get a preview myself of what this show would look like. But you know, since it was postponed, some of the work has been sold and some of it has been shipped to a brand new gallery, the Lori Austin Gallery in California. And so I'm going to be creating a lot new of new work for this show. And this show will likely have um, probably more encaustic, but also larger works on canvas that are in um, acrylic and then perhaps um, some works on panel that are cold wax and oil. So those are all the things that I'm looking forward to doing. But I just wanted to give you a quick studio tour and I hope you enjoyed that. If you get a chance, please tell me what your New Year's goals are. I'd love to know. And um, I shared with you mine and you can hold me accountable. Um, look for new videos coming to YouTube. And um, I wish you a very happy new year and a very safe new year. And um, hope you're doing well in your studio. And uh, thanks so much. Bye now. For a haircut. Her brother already got a haircut. Didn't you? Yeah. Okay, are we ready?
sheer Alright, that's it, she gets a treat now. <laughs> <laughs>